and two. Okay, recording in progress, got it. <laughs> and, and so, the same mindfulness state, another trick, which means what? It can be trained. Okay, we can do some practice to enhance and improve the quality of mindfulness and what it may, might be promoted by certain practices or activities such as meditation, it is not equivalent to our um, synonymously with them. So which means um, the practices are our approaches to um, develop mindfulness and mindfulness is a more um, higher level uh, psychological state. And from uh, Linda Ham, uh, which uh, who is a Buddhist monk famous for uh, mindfulness teachings, mentioned that mindfulness shows us what is happening in our bodies, our emotions, our minds, and in the world. Through mindfulness, we avoid harming ourselves and others. And this is also a very important uh, quality of uh, mental state, especially for the hospitality industry. Right. We saw so many employees that left the industry during the pandemic because they, they got um, abusive uh, um, supervisors and, and also workplace bullying, discrimination a lot you know, um, in the industry. And how having a quality of mindfulness is actually important in our workplace and in, in our industry. And traditionally, the concept of mindfulness come from India, and we also see um, it from uh, the Buddhist um, traditional approach, and come from uh, the two Pali words, sati and vipassana. So that uh, means to stop and to maintain awareness of the object. It could be the time you are feeling, and also uh, the, the situation that you are facing about, and vipassana refers to a deep observation of this uh, object. For example, uh, maybe um, some of you have kids, right? They may get addicted into uh, video games or sometimes we spend too much time on watching you know, uh, TV shows or something. Then uh, Sate is the state that we aware that, okay, uh, maybe this is enough. Now I can uh, finish the break and do something else. So that's the awareness of the object. And the person has a further, deeper observation regarding why I waste too much time in this type of activity. You know, why I'm wasting so much time to worry about something that happened right now. So, so that is a good idea to just be aware of something. And the persona is illumination, you know, to further do some self-reflection and thinking about how things could be done better. Okay, and meditation is a pretty traditional approach uh, used uh, for us to uh, actually um, do practice to improve uh, our mindfulness. And thinking from the uh, theoretical support for mindfulness, uh, that uh, uh, Hawkins proposed the map of consciousness, which uh, covered several levels of emotions and and also uh, the um, uh, feelings regarding how people could perform in different levels. So we see all the ways from uh, uh, the negative emotions to positive emotions and different emotions have different levels of spiritual energy. And we can also see how each of the consciousness level can um, uh, reflected on the way how we experience in our daily life and the way how we work on in our uh, daily life. So the higher level concepts such as enlightenment, peace, joy, love, you know, and acceptance, and even willingness actually create happiness, productivity, and some uh, peak performance without stress, and even some uh, better outcomes um, in life. So the improvement all the way from shame to joy is the um, increasement of our wellness. And we move further you know, to the status of peace and enlightenment. And this is pretty much the mindfulness scope. Okay. And based on the most recent uh, research findings, we know mindfulness can help us regulate our emotions and develop uh, coping strategies and be less um, distracted by you know, uh, activities and sleep well and have self-compassion and potentially build our resilience. 
And there are many practices regarding mindfulness, right? I know some of you might have heard about meditation, right? Or heard about yoga, right? Or qigong, tai chi, right? Those are all uh, practices related to uh, mindfulness. But the reason why we want to do so is because those activities, even the silent activities or moving activities, those could actually um, serve help the circulation of the energy in our body. And we also notice that when we have sitting meditation, like traditional meditation uh, practice, the circulation of the energy in our body has been accelerated a lot. Okay. And the higher goal is to you know, um, increase the uh, circulation of the body so that we can get more energy and be, op be open-minded to receive um, the guidance from the universe. That's a more uh, spiritual stage of it. And uh, this is from uh, the yoga practice um, talking about different uh, chakras in body regarding you know, how uh, um, mindfulness practice actually can help us to open uh, different chakras in our body to represent different meanings and emotions. Okay. And further in the Eastern uh, Asia approach, we call Chan or Zen, um, which is um, the practice to focus on the certain meditation. And, and here in this approach, we talk more regarding uh, when you get seated, how the energy in your body actually flow from the front of your body all the way to the back and create a great circulation for the body especially during winter and fall, right? Sometimes we feel like, oh, the weather is so cold and, and the body circulation is not good enough. I can feel my hands and feet are so cold, right? And meditation can actually help a lot about it. Um, and uh, there are different uh, approaches regarding Chan and, and Zen practice. And my learning is from Donghua Awareness and Illumination Chan, uh, which is from uh, one of the approaches. And over there, they highlight three, um, um, techniques are regarding sitting and meditation. First, adjusting the posture, you know, um, making sure that you're sitting well and also adjusting the breath, breathing and adjusting the mind. So you can hear some uh, Zen teachers talking about, you know, you, you focus on one image, like you focus on one lotus or focus on one uh, Buddha statue or thinking about what you should carefully and deeply into it, or maybe you can count your breath, breathing, right? You can count breath in, breath out number one, breath in, breath out number two. All the techniques are being utilized to collect all the energies into one target, okay? Because during our day life, we spend so much time and energy in different issues different tasks. And oftentimes we feel that it's hard for us to focus on something like doing research, you know, or focus on something like having a good sleep, right? So uh, meditation practice actually can help us to overcome those barriers because this is a practice for us to collect all the scattered focus and scattered energy back into 100%. And so uh, technology has been a new addition to the industry. And I, I do feel uh, mindfulness can you know, pair with it and, and technology should be able to you know, utilize to better support employee mindfulness. And employee mindfulness should be you know, emphasized because that can help them to not only overcome the technological applications right now happening in the industry, but also to support their productivity and health. Okay, so uh, for example, uh, there are some uh, devices such as you now the uh, headband can actually control uh, and monitor uh, your uh, uh, sensations to uh, guide your meditation and provide you a better sleep and have a better focus. And in terms of the workplace interactions with robots right now are happening in the restaurant industry, um, mindfulness has been applied to support employees be more open-minded and with flexibility to work with robots as your bodies in the workplace <laughs> and to appreciate rather than to you know, say no, to, to have a, a, a more positive attitudes toward a new uh, workplace environment. And also 
muscle pain has been a common problem for a major major uh, frontline employees, right? Because they serve a lot. And, and so uh, the most recent studies also show that um, mindfulness, uh, especially the body awareness could be you know, paired with the uh, physical activity apps to support uh, physical recovery from muscle pains. So I think this is also a niche future direction that could actually help us to benefit a lot. In terms of teaching, I do think uh, there's a need for us to highlight the importance of mindfulness in hospitality education. We all know many of our students have ADHD problem, right? They, they feel it's hard for them to focus in the classroom and sometimes they need to you know, walk around and check their phones a lot. And uh, employees always being stressful, right? And one of the most popular research topics in hospitality is actually emotional, out, right? And also uh, those kind of uh, stressors happening uh, in, in the industry and also how uh, um, restaurant employees nowadays, they, they have to not only serve those waiting in line physically, but also taking orders online, right? So they are facing many stressors and many difficulties. So mindfulness should be introduced you know, to enhance their self-awareness, emotional balance, social awareness, and relationship management. And in my class, you know, I always uh, show uh, a video like this uh, in advance you know, before class gets started to help my students calm down. And especially the University of Florida was with the color of blue and orange, and, and we are close to the ocean. So uh, this is, uh, great uh, video I use a lot. And every time when my students walk into my classroom, they enjoy the video of the ocean and with the piano music. It actually helps them to calm down a lot. And I have told uh, hospital revenue management for years and, and the passing rate is pretty high. And uh, every end of the semester, I always get comments from students saying this actually helped them a lot mentally, because they always feel it's um, stressful to enter a classroom for revenue, right? <laughs> you know, many of our students like don't like numbers, <laughs> but this kind of approach to be mentally prepared actually can help them to calm down and, you know, uh, have a better a mental frame to join and be ready for the classroom learning. And even for uh, the time before exams, I also uh, uh, assign this activity. Uh, you can find much more on YouTube regarding guided meditation to release your fear and nervous and anxiety regarding the upcoming exam. You know? <laughs> and this uh, guided meditation video actually uh, showcase one example, and it's only 10 minutes. Okay, because uh, I put this as one of assignments before exams and students also found this as a good and helpful tool for them um, to release ner nervous and anxiety before exams. And in the 10 minutes guided meditation from this video, the video will guide students to you know, calm down and uh, making sure that you, know, you have checked all the materials well prepared you know, and even imagine you know, the exam day, how you're going to enjoy the quick, the quiz questions or exam questions. So, so this has also worked very well. And I also did the research uh, with a guided material video from YouTube. And, and this study, I, I choose this uh, 10 minute guided material video, which has been viewed um, over uh, 30 million uh, views around the world um, is published by uh, those two uh, guys uh, on YouTube seven years ago. And from the study, uh, we did longitudinal design uh, for eight days. So we, we randomly uh, select um, the American employees, uh, those who are working full time in the US and we uh, uh, divide them into meditation group and a non-meditation group. And each of them will get a daily survey for us, like three hour survey. And the meditation group will practice this um, 10 minute guided meditation every single day. And in the survey, we put state mindfulness, cognitive effect, effect mindfulness 
state reference is talking more regarding your sensation and awareness of your mind and your body. Okay. And cognitive and affective mindfulness is talking more regarding the psychological state, such as attention, focus, awareness, and acceptance. Okay. And we also uh, cover the scales regarding positive and negative work reflections, perceived abusive supervision, and depression. And um, work, work uh, reflection, which means you know, during your time, for example, after I leave my office and enjoy my dinner uh, on my dining table at home, you know, am I thinking about something very happy, right? Such as my students you know, have a great talk with me or my colleagues congratulate me for you know, doing something good. You know? There's a positive work reflection, but negative work reflection could be something like, uh, I have a very bad boss, you know, my chair is so bad, you know, <laughs> or, or workplace bullying happened in my department and I hate my, you know, my colleague or something, right? That is a negative work reflection. And the interesting finding from our study is this, for state mindfulness, we do see the treatment group go overall well, way above the control group. And for our awareness of the mind and the awareness of the body, we do see some differences here. Okay. And in terms of um, CNS scale, we see attention is something not clear yet. So there are still some quality or dimensions of mindfulness may require longer time of mindfulness practice you know, because we are only testing eight days and it's only 10 minutes per day. Yeah, but for some other uh, dimensions such as focus, acceptance, and awareness, we do see some great patterns that the uh, mindfulness group actually perform better on those uh, dimensions of mindfulness. And we do see their beginning stage. Uh, those two groups are pretty similar, but as time goes by, day by day, 10 minutes only. <laughs> the reason why uh, you know, I don't have many uh, titans of guided meditation videos on YouTube. And the reason why I, I taste 10 minutes is because it's a good slogan, you know, and it's short and visible. If 10 minutes per day can work, then that could be a very good slogan, you know, to promote uh, meditation guided uh, meditation to support your mindfulness. And for positive and negative work reflections, we do see uh, the treatment group overall perform better in terms of positive work reflection than uh, the control variable. And the meditation group actually have less negative work reflection because they can easily tune in and tune out, right? Because uh, the guided meditation, meditation and mindfulness practice those are our approaches for us to you know, stay in the current moment. We don't need to care about all kinds of, you know, negative things happen in the workplace. Right? We are staying in the current moment, um, enlightened and happy about what do I have right now. I cherish, you know, and, and those are the qualities um, and mental practice for us to you know, stay in a calm and, and, and peace uh, status. And then for abusive supervision, we also see it actually takes longer time. I, we, we, we know, right? <laughs> Sometimes if you have a bad chair, it takes much longer time for us to forget about it. You know? <laughs> or or uh, uh, maybe you still will have, have, still have a place in your mind, but you can you know, so wisely know how to deal with that. And in our study, we found that after five days, we started to see some um, differences to approach so that the meditation groups do show a low, lower um, score compared to the control group uh, for perceived abusive supervision. And for um, depression, we also found this is something take much longer time, even you know, after seven days, we started to see some you know, different patterns by the average score for depression. And the treatment group do you know, constantly show a lower uh, average mean score for depression. So when we count uh, day one to day eight 
uh, when you see the meditation group perform well in some dimensions of mindfulness and then for occupational health, negative work reflection is something very significant. You, know, you can tune out. <laughs> you know, uh, you are paid only as an employee, but you yourself is a human being. You know, we are not getting uh, paid to sort out our soul. Right, the work, work, work environment, the emotions created from work is only you know during the work hours. So you can better tune in, tune out, have a better quality of life. And the next part is regarding research. And so far, I have summarized um, different dimensions of mindfulness research in hospitality and in tourism. So in hospitality research, uh, mindfulness has been used a lot to test employees and customers uh, because there are some skills being developed to measure human mindfulness. And in the employee side, um, people often talk about you know, how they deal with stressors, how to deal with workplace bullying, and how to have a better productivity at home uh, and work. And for customers, um, uh, mindfulness can uh, reduce some waste of purchasing. Know, especially for those who have um, 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 non-reasonable purchasing patterns and frequencies, mindfulness can help them to do a better uh, decision making. And in branding, uh, we have some wellness hotel brands being created in recent years, you know, such as Six Senses, right? And, and those uh, hotel brands actually combine mindfulness a lot into the design of the uh, stay experience. And then some restaurants and events, they also utilize mindfulness to create a five senses or six senses experience, you know, uh, for the decoration and for the activity design. And for tourism research, uh, mindfulness has been utilized a lot, you know, all the way from the traditional Zen retreats um, practice and to the recent technology uh, enhanced um, tourism experience. You know, how uh, a guided meditation can actually help you to know more about a uh, nature destination you know, or how uh, activities related to mindfulness can actually help people to gain uh, wellness, especially during the pandemic. So, so those are the uh, domains of research. And thinking further, so um, in hospitality, we had um, applied further into the you know, workplace mindfulness or manager mindfulness, mindful drinking, mindful eating, right? Those are all the qualities and applications of mindfulness has been developed in nutrition, in management, and in marketing that we can actually um, borrow into our field to explore, explore, uh, explore more, and also mindful sensory design in, in hospitality uh, events. And for tourism, there are several studies talking about mindfulness-related act activities and practices such as meditation, yoga, tai chi, and even forest bathing. You know, uh, maybe the fall season, uh, the seasonal fall in. Um, North is um, U.S. is a good timing you know, to practice forest bathing, you know, to appreciate colors of the tree, right? And, and that's uh, a great topic. And even a virtual mindfulness activities, you know, such as YouTube and Airbnb online experiences, these are also all possible approaches to do the study. And also uh, some researchers do mindful tourism journey you know, uh, combine the concept of mindfulness as a whole itinerary design and also how people experience uh, a mindfulness-driven uh, tour guide experience. Those are a part of it. And this is my very first study regarding mindfulness. And a lot of time I go back to the old um, or origins of the tradition to check you know, how uh, Zen retreats at a old temple you know, can actually be considered as a mindfulness tourism and how people actually get some benefits from this spiritual journey. So I work with um, two uh, Buddhist practitioners. One is Buddhist nun and the, the other one is a Buddhist monk. And, and through uh, summarizing all the comments from participants, uh, we identified the motivations why people want to join a Zen retreat. And further, we noticed the uh, growth, the knowledge growth and the spiritual growth during the Zen retreat because they do sit in meditation 
morning meditation, and also uh, attend some lectures regarding the Dharma, and also how the place, the location, create um, the mechanism for um, the support of Dajin spiritual growth, and there are also some outcomes of it. And further, uh, I combine um, the sensations uh, um, during the meditation experience and also the mindfulness growth and also with the overall outcome regarding uh, mindfulness enlightenment combined with the Buddhist sutras to, to showcase how the traditional literature support actually uh, guideline, uh, guided the map of practice regarding mindfulness. But go back to the tourism field. I propose um, the different levels of involvement you know, regarding whether we just want to have an easy, fun, and comfortable Zen tourism, right? It could be you now and, and uh, a Zen related sites or a Zen related activities, right? Maybe you go to a temple, have a walk, or maybe you go to a Zen retreat center, have a walk. Maybe you attend a 10 minute Zen meditation or a Zen tea taste, or maybe Zen. Calligraphy. You now there are several uh, activities that can be attended easily, or maybe Zen or mindfulness can be lifestyle. Right, there's a moderate level of it. So maybe uh, visitors can enjoy uh, Zen or mindfulness in a daily lifestyle every day. You have regular meditation practice, or maybe you visit nature sites to experience uh, concentration with the universe. You know, connection with the universe, right? And then the highest advanced uh, part of it could be the Zen retreat, which is my research setting of the paper, right? People actually attend a Zen retreat for seven days, you know, uh, and, and that's an in intense practice of it. And then uh, during the pandemic, I did a study with my uh, uh, friends and we got a sample from Turkey. At that time, I still want to do mindfulness, but I'm thinking mindfulness is not only in Buddhism, you know, it is a pure, common, uh, human uh, mental status. And, and that'd be great if we can break the religious barriers and we think of further regarding some other areas of the world with another different religion. So uh, we sampled uh, hotel employees in Turkey and those are 100% Muslim. And our idea is during the pandemic, employees suffer a lot, right? I mean, they need to deal with not only all kinds of <laughs> things happen and surprises in the industry, but also taking care about the health risks at home. Right? So religiosity, you know, seeking support from religion as a common uh, approach people often do. And then those intrinsic and extrinsic religiosity actually help them to build up two uh, quality of mental status. One is mental toughness, or we call it resilience, right? The other one is mindfulness. And through mental toughness or through mindfulness, they can actually build up their political skill. And here I need to highlight, political skill is important, needed as a positive skill, okay, because Political, political skill means uh, you can utilize all the resources to still support you know, your goal and you can use contingency uh, decision making and also you know, uh, show some flexibility regarding you know, your value and your skills to actually uh, achieve um, your, um, your uh, profits in business or your um, some better uh, higher level goals in life. And our study do show um, mental toughness and mindfulness are important uh, mediators to support the transformed positive inference from religiosity all the way to the development of political skill. Especially uh, before the pandemic, hotel employees only need to deal with the uh, customers showing up, you know, physically in a hotel property. But during the pandemic, like the experience, you know, uh, layoff with many other colleagues. So suddenly, you know, one employee need to take care of three employees workload, 
right? And how to deal with all kinds of issues together. You know, political skill is important for you to you know, cover this one a little bit, cover that one a little bit, and utilize very limited resources to support you know, the needs of everybody. So, so uh, we do see uh, the importance of you know, building mindfulness and building mental toughness you know, to, to further grow on political skill. And most recently, uh, I got a funding uh, internally at UF to support my research regarding how technology should be supported uh, uh, and applied into mindfulness. And we call the title as an uh, AI approach to mindfulness. We utilize immersive human environmental interactions, uh, nature sounds, nature destinations, and guided meditation. And I collaborated with um, the director of UF mindfulness program, Dr. What and also Michael in Anacopia that true. Uh, she is a, a system professor in engineering. So we are trying to identify uh, um, traits, especially the mental and emotional states and traits you know people often experience with for potential mental and emotional benefits that people want to receive. And then pair those uh, key items with the uh, elements that we recorded from natural sounds, natural destinations, and getting meditation. So uh, during the pilot test, we can create and record all kinds of uh, materials here. And we invite participants to rate you know, those um, key variables into each of our files. Then we will get a database to create our own website. One day, when a participant read our website, he may he or she may type in or select um, his or her current mental or emotional state and trait, and also select you know, the desired uh, emotional benefits. Then our system behind uh, the website will draw calculation you now to pair uh, the nature sound file, the nature destination file and a guided machine meditation file combined together with the file that coded with most frequently to their needs and to showcase um, an immersive experience uh, on the website. And we believe that kind of um, tool, uh, online platform to actually improve uh, the participants' uh, mindfulness qualities and further uh, regarding the pro-environmental uh, behaviors and attitudes and attachment to the nature environment. So uh, we have four uh, stages of the study and we are in the end of uh, study one, which is collecting uh, uh, the database for nature sounds and images. And later we'll do pilot test with uh, a huge group of participants to consider training phases to um, add um, the scores of those um, psychological traits and, and also psychological benefits into uh, those uh, files that we recorded. And then uh, I will hire a company to build up the whole website platform and to do a pilot test again. And we will do hypothesis testing you know, with those participants to see how this kind of um, online platform actually could support uh, those uh, uh, psychological needs, benefits, and mindfulness. And this is a photo taken <laughs> from my graduate students. Uh, Darcy is my current uh, PhD student, and Cinder is my master's student. They did recording uh, around several uh, nature sites uh, uh, around the state of Florida, especially uh, around Gainesville, Florida. And I, I feel it's very fortunate that they the day recording at uh, St. Augustine and Tampa, the honeymoon beach, before Hurricane Ian. <laughs> that just uh, the weekend before Hurricane Ian, and 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 that's a good catch. <laughs> yeah, so uh, so uh, we are in the process of of editing all of these uh, videos, and hopefully we can introduce um, the website for free to the public. And I also take that um, deep into my mind, you know, because this is something we actually develop a tool or an opportunity for free for the public, you know, to, to appreciate and to enjoy the beauty of uh, the nature and to um, develop their mindfulness, especially in the post-pandemic era. And, and, and I will 
I will honestly say, you now doing something like this could cost a lot. You know, <laughs> the the money, the 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 cost that we need to purchase all those equipments and also to pay for a company to develop a website, it's super expensive. And and sometimes even after doing all kinds of these things, it, it spend lots of time. But you may only be able to publish one journal article. That's it. Yeah, but but uh, I think it's still worth it. You know, sometimes it's trade off as a researcher and as an educator. You know, you think, you know, am I need to be productive all the time? You no, know, just doing data analysis, publish, or sometimes I can spare some time. You know, to do something that can actually show some show some part impact to the society. And, and I think uh, this is something that uh, I feel, uh, although we spend lots of time on <laughs> this summer and still now, and I'm still worrying about you know, how the, the flow of staffs could be. And I'm worrying about uh, whether the company could accept my limited budget, you know, <laughs> or uh, I need to do some negotiation regarding the budget issue, right? But it's still a good try. And I hope to you know, make it a completely um, done and, and showcase the website to the public, um, maybe um, before 2023 or maybe in early 2023. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. And thank you very much. Any questions? I really enjoyed this, Yao Chen. Um, a, a, a range of questions, but I don't want to get in the way of other people's questions. What occurred to me in the last slide with the pictures mm -hmm. is um, two different things. One is, I think there's an article in how you select the nature sites and the nature sounds. Mm -hmm. It's a different kind of article, but the issue of the criteria used to select those sounds, because, you know, forest bathing in, in Florida, in the Cypress, trees and the palm trees is totally different than in Adirondacks mm -hmm. or on Cape Cod or in Montana. So you, you have a really interesting article there about how you pick what is the bias or what are the criteria for selecting the nature sounds and the nature sites because I think you could find sounds that affect men or women differently. Mm -hmm. You could find sounds that affect ethnic groups differently. Mm -hmm. So how do you sort that? And that's a, a whole wonderful article that mm -hmm. really makes a difference. Um, and, and then there's the other issue of what the practice of mindfulness is. There's meditations and meditations and types of meditation and types of meditation. So you there is a range of things you could publish mm -hmm. out of this. Mm -hmm. The the uh, research teach the research methods teacher in me immediately jumped and said, "Why are you picking Florida forest and Florida sounds? That's totally different than New England sounds or ocean sounds or um, lake sounds in Buffalo. I mean, it, it's just a whole. I'm sure you write a whole a lit um, limitation section, but." I think that's something to really think through as you do this, because when you think of meditation, you think of the gong or the chime. Mm -hmm. There's very different kinds of chimes that affect people very differentially. So I just raise that to help you think through that kind of stuff. Yeah, thank you so much. This is a very good question. Yeah. And <laughs> actually, uh, because this is a seed grant, and with a limited budget, we originally thought maybe we can just get uh, a copyright agreement from YouTube, you know, and, and talk to the YouTubers whether we can download your videos or not. But later we face some um, copyright uh, concerns, you know, regarding you know, how things could be happen if in the future, uh, if the case could be commercialized, maybe we need to deal with all the copyright issues again. And also, if we can record all the videos by ourselves, then we don't need to worry about copyright issues. And then we can have the ownership of the videos. But um, the other situation could be, you know, the feasibility for us to record all those videos by ourselves. So we later think about, okay, so since this is a state grant proposal. Yeah, how wonderful graduates are for doing that. 
yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah. immediately think of the sounds and the visions on Chincoteague, for example, or some of the islands off the off the coast of this country is a very different kind of notion yes. Yes. than in the woods mm -hmm. in, in the area you are in Florida. Mm -hmm. Very different right. than the Everglades. Yeah, so uh, we try to diversify all the sites that we can uh, as much as possible. So for example, even for the forest, uh, my students schedule into uh, the Kanamba Hub uh, Botanic Garden. We have a huge um, bamboo forest, you know, and we have all kinds of different trees. So we try to diversify, and not only with the trees and the lake, we also have springs nearby, and we also have the bay, and we also have the ocean. So we try to diversify the natural sites as much as possible, but I agree there still be some differences regarding, you know, as how much as we can cover, right? Even after we finish all, all the sites in the U.S., there's still many other places. Right, but I mean, there's there's yeah. the there's the next request for funding to mm -hmm. expand it to different sounds and different locations, yes. which yes. may affect mm -hmm. ages differently. Mm -hmm. Kids have yeah. one response to sounds. Yeah. People yeah. lived in urban settings have a different response to country sounds. Yes. People yes. in the country mm -hmm. respond to urban sounds. Yes. So um, that's also the reason and the beauty why we want to have an AI powered platform. Yep. Because yes. when we collect um, the survey with the experience, you know, we get to know their gender, mm -hmm. age, mm -hmm. location of living, and their even cultural background. Yep. All yep. those. Bitcoin information will be calculated together with yep. the psychological and mental skills. So, so by doing so, even you know, with all same needs of psychological traits and um, emotional benefits that we want to seek, if one is male, one is female, the system will count a different combination of the sound scattermentation image for them. Yeah. So the more participants now we may have in the future, the better. Yeah. Remember, if you're going to do the issue of gender, mm -hmm. male or female, you might find a lot of insight with people in transition mm -hmm. from male to female or female to male, because sure. they would be in a male body, but maybe a female sensitivity sure. Sure. and sure. back and forth, which would really give you not only insights, but maybe give you other funding sources who want to examine that or explore that. Yeah, I, I totally agree because I'm a gay <laughs> and I think, you Me know, too. my preference. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think, you know, my preference is sometimes more like my female friends. <laughs> so we have, Yumi. we have Yumi with in. Yeah, hello, hello. My name is Yumi Ki. I'm a coordinator of hospitality program from the CCBC in Baltimore. Uh, thank you for you know presenting your very interesting topic. So I missed, sorry about that, I missed the first part. So I have uh, two questions. First, so you mentioned about the mindfulness. So I just wonder how did you measure the mindfulness? So like what kind of questions or I just wonder how could you measure the mindfulness? Because that is like a mentor, you know, part. So, you know, I have some research regarding the uh, mentor, some uh, terminology, but it is hard. I just wonder. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Uh, so this is a slide showing the uh, two um, mindfulness skills that I uh -huh. use in my professional health study. So SMS is a state mm -hmm. mindfulness scale and the CAMS is a more psychological state scale. And mm -hmm. SCMS is um, developed originally from meditation practice, mm -hmm. you know, after meditation or after yoga practice, you know, how yeah. you integrate yeah. your awareness of your mind and with your body. They have around 20 items over there. And then the other type of that is uh, trade mindfulness. Um, and the CAMS is one of the trade mindfulness scales. Mm -hmm. We have many trade mindfulness scales to be used like um, the most well-known, the five-factor uh, mindfulness scale or CMS is also a common scale to be used. In this type of scale, they have um, different dimensions of psychological quality related to mindfulness, such as attention, focus, current moment, you know, acceptance, mm -hmm. awareness. And um, um, based on current empirical studies found, 
the train reference quality too will require more time to be improved and, and to see mm -hmm. the significant change. You know? If I say, uh, let's practice a uh, meditation for 10 minutes right now, then take mm -hmm. a survey. Maybe uh, the users or practitioners and participants will rate a little bit higher on uh, uh, mind and body before uh, compared to before and after the meditation practice. But in terms of you know, attention, focus, awareness, or even acceptance, maybe slightly or even no difference because yeah. um, the trade markets will take longer time you know, to see the change. So there are some technology companies, especially for the uh, R&D department, they offer regular meditation uh, or guided meditation or even yoga lessons to the, uh, to the uh, R&D uh, uh, engineers because they know this is important you know, for them to uh, clear all the old thoughts and welcome all the new ideas and be open-minded with creativity you know, to work on their design work. So, so this is something that okay, you, if, you. Yeah, if you want to do further uh, studies regarding mindful practice you know, and to, uh -huh. to have the longitudinal checking and monitoring regarding your changes, this might work. But if you want to do some studies such as yoga, you know, mm -hmm. to support like housekeepers, uh, muscle pen, then uh, stay mindfulness could be a very good uh, skill to be used. Okay, thank you. So thank after you. publishing this article, this your study, so would you please share your like survey questions regarding the mind mindfulness? Because I'm very interested about the cognitive mindfulness the concept. Sure, and this is a well-known scale. So if you mm -hmm. Google it, you can find you know, a complete mm -hmm. scale from the researchers and there are many more, yes. I see. So second mm -hmm. question is about what kind of program did you use for the measure your model? I just wonder. Oh, I use M plus a lot. Yeah. I see, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank Very you. interesting topic, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yumi. So Jeff, I saw you raise your hand. Yes, Yachin, thank you very much for your insights and your presentation. It's it's wonderful. I'm thinking about when you talked about our students and, and more on the teaching side, and you were talking about, you know, a lot of our students are, have, may have ADHD and, and, and whatnot. And I've done some work in social and emotional learning. I, I teach a, a freshman seminar in that and very interesting. I'm wondering if you thought about how your research and mindfulness might intersect with that when we're teaching students to be knowledge of their own emotions of others right and how they in the relationship skills with others how they manage themselves i think mindfulness can be a big part of that and i i do see some intersection there so it'd be interesting to see how your work might intersect with the the literature and the work that's out there on you know social emotional competency and we talk a lot about leaders who are you know and we look more at you know eq versus iq and so it's kind of neat to see how the two intersect. It could be another study, it's just more to look at, just was making me think. Yeah, um, first of all, I, I think this is a good direction you know, to, to care about a student's uh, psychological needs. And my approach is I always share videos from YouTube. That's a free, effective, and like an access by and service very often, right? And, and so um, I, I got some students talk to me and regarding their sometimes hard to focus, you know, and feel anxious about uh, exams. And then I provide some, you know, guided meditation videos because there are many types of them, right? Such as, uh, for said, even for meditation, there are different approaches of it. And same thing for guided meditation. Some of them are for you to release your anxiety. Some of them are for you to accept yourself of who you are, you know? Right. And so based on students' um, um, needs uh, that I receive from private meetings, I sometimes share the videos to them. And even during the pandemic, uh, I got many emails from students saying, I got COVID, you know, I feel so bad in, in my body. And I also found there are some guided meditation videos talking about, you know, to scan your body and, and stay positive and feel like a golden light, you know, pouring into your body and, and then you enjoy a beautiful breathing uh, 
pattern. And, and those videos actually, after I shared it to the students, they feel so good. You know? <laughs> they feel like this, they get supported a lot spiritually and, and also physically, they have their faith and confidence to recover during the difficult times. Right now, we, we should talk more offline because I've been doing some work. Uh, the presentation we did last month was on student mental health, mm -hmm. and so there might be some things that we could collaborate on. We'll have to talk outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. So, um, Thank you. Jeff, I think um, I did a little work on mindfulness teaching as well. So I think uh, something I found out is um, I think for a teacher ourselves, it's also important to practice because student can mm -hmm. definitely sense your vibe. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I don't know. There, there might be something to dis uh, discover more, but uh, it's just a little my um, um, experience. Agree. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so, and, yeah. Sorry. And, Go and, ahead, Yojin. Sorry. And, and I feel sometimes in the classroom setting, uh, I hope uh, the mindfulness qualities, not only for students with special needs, we, we should can create the overall sense of mindfulness within the whole class. And by doing so, students, they are good at testing. They're actually being able to you know, support and show experience to other students with special needs. And that's also what I found from my uh, teaching. Because sometimes I, I share guided meditation videos as assignment, you know, such as show love and care for others, you know, and, and be compassionate about how others are having difficulty. No, that's the way how we create a beautiful society, right? And, and so not only share specific videos to students with special accommodation, but also develop a sense of mindfulness as a group. And, and, and if we can do so, you know, we have generations of students who are going to be employees in industry in the near future, right? We can actually change the industry a little bit. You know, a, a wonderful trigger to get into that is there's some really good articles on uh, emotional labor. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you can read that in, even in an introduction to hospitality or introduction to tourism because of the emotional labor we expect our staff to do. Mm -hmm. And then they learn that mindfulness is a way of addressing that issue and they don't yes. get exhausted. <laughs> they in fact see it as a chance to practice mm -hmm. mindfulness. Sure. And therefore it becomes an opportunity and a challenge, yes. not a struggle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There's yeah. a doorway. Yes, I, I did well-being study for my master's thesis and very love for my dissertation. And the reason why I switched to mindfulness is because I realized love and well-being, they are good qualities, but without real practice. But mindfulness is something has been developed with all kinds of practice. So when we do study like this, we actually can provide some yeah. suggestions yeah, and the solutions. Yeah. All right, so um, we are almost to our time. And then thank you so much for Yao Jing. Thank you so much for thank you, speaking Yao Jing. Thank, you. Thank, yeah. you. thank you. Thank you. And thank you everybody joining us. And uh, please looking forward to the next topic. And yeah, Lainey, I, are we now at 11 o'clock instead of the regular nine? Um, We have different time. We have nine, 10, okay. 11. Okay. It, yeah, we varies. I just, I'm just trying to plan ahead because Last year it was at 9 a.m. on a Friday, always at 9 a.m. So yeah. people knew before they got into other meetings, that's all. We tried okay. to make it a little bit different. And I think we have the schedule pretty much set for the whole okay. fall yeah. semester. And we're almost there with the spring. And then we're going to put that out so everybody will know. That's which, fine. Which Look, was when. I yeah. don't have classes to worry about, so I'm. <laughs> so thank you so much everyone have a nice thank weekend you, thank, thank, you. thank you thank you good to see you bye 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 bye, bye. bye.